Hello and welcome back to Serpent Sunday. As always, I am your host, Morgan. This week we're going to talk about an interesting little species that I grew up with in my own backyard, the rosy boa. This cool little species of boa is one of only a couple of species that are actually native to North America. These snakes range in size from about a foot and a half to just under four feet in length. They are a relatively heavy bodied snake with very smooth scales. They're characterized by three darker stripes on a lighter background. However, in the more coastal subspecies, the stripes tend to be less defined and in the desert subspecies, the stripes may be more defined as well as anything ranging from those two extremes. Every once in a while, a solid color rosy boa will be found, but that is not as common as the patterned individuals. Their base colors range from a lovely gray, bluish gray, cream, tan, or even white. And the stripes tend to be black to reddish brown. However, individuals with fairly bright orange or rose colored stripes and markings are seen in the wild as well. Now, where exactly does the name Rosie come from if they're not necessarily a rose colored snake? Well, on some members of this species, the ventral or belly scales tend to have a rosy color to them, which is where that name came from. However, there is a little bit of push to change their common name to the three lined boa as opposed to the rosy boa since it would make more sense. However, common names tend to differ depending on where you are, no matter what species you're talking about. You can find rosy boas in the wild in the southwestern United States, specifically in the more southern California and southwestern Arizona regions, all the way down into Baja California and other surrounding areas of Mexico as well. These snakes tend to prefer dry shrublands and desert habitats where rocky areas with larger boulders are common and they have a preference for habitats near water. However, this particular species of snake does not have to be in a habitat with water, but you are more likely to find them near streams in canyons and riverbeds and places like that but I would like to stress that rocks are a must. They do tend to hide among the rocks and are rarely found out in the open. Where I grew up, our backyard was a mix of chaparral and rocky terrain, and we did have a fairly large rosy boa that could be found every year hanging out in our property. Rosy boas have a fairly common diet for other constrictor species, especially in the area. They have a preference for small rodents, but they also are known to eat lizards, small bats, baby rabbits, and sometimes other snakes. Now, rosy boas are not just predators in the ecosystem. They are an important prey source for other predators like foxes, coyotes, birds of prey, and king snakes that we have discussed before. So they are kind of right in the middle of their food chain, which is similar to most other snakes in the wild of this small to moderate size. Since rosy boas are found in shrublands and desert habitats that do get very hot very quickly once summer sets in, they tend to breed in the spring and early summer when prey is most abundant and temperatures are in an optimal range. Interestingly, females of this species may only breed once every other year as opposed to other snake species that will breed every time they have an opportunity. And there is some evidence to show that the receptiveness of females is highly dependent on the prey abundance in the area at the time of their breeding season. And 
Interestingly about this species, there is no record of any intense competition or fighting for mates in the males of the species, which is fairly unique to rosy boas, as in many other species, there is record of at least some form of combat over mates in the males of those species. Now, when they do breed, the females give live birth. They are boas, they're members of the Boidae family. And when they do give live birth, they produce one to four offspring. Excuse me, one to 14 offspring with an average of five to eight. So every time they breed, you could get up to 14 brand new baby boas, however you're more likely to hit a number somewhere in the middle. And their lifespan can range anywhere from about 15 to 30 years in the wild. But these snakes are known to move rather slow. They are ambush predators, but they are also known to be fairly even tempered. And as such, they have kind of made a name for themselves in the pet market. They have become a fairly well-known starter snake species for snake owners. And there are plenty of captive bred individuals. However, it's important to note here that in some states, especially California, it is not necessarily legal to own a rosy boa as a pet, so check your local regulations. So that's all I have for you this week. I do apologize that the last couple Serpent Sundays have been rather short, but the last few weeks have marked the end of my quarter at school, so I've been busy working on term projects and studying for finals. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks here I will have a few more in-depth videos to share with you. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, day, evening, what have you. I will see you all next time. Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you would like to see more. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out thereptilegoth.com for all of my articles and blog posts. If you found any value in this video and you would like to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. That link is also in the description down below. And a special thanks goes out to my Diamond Dragon patron, Diane V. What you're doing is really helping me fund a dream here. I will see you guys all in the next one.